Hi, I'm Patricia from Trisha's Lovely Creations, and today we're going to create these beautiful barrettes. I got these imprint cutters from Joy at Ojoy oh Creations, and that's what we're going to be using today. Um, for these ones, I'm using a uh, Sculpey Bacon Bin, but if you have Fimo Leather, that will work. If you have Cos Clay, that will work. Um, even if you have just Primo, you can also do the barrettes doing that, and I'll show how you can do that as well. Um, I want to show you Joy's card. There it is. OjoyCreations.com And right now you can get 25% uh, off your order using code TLC. Okay, here I've got my clay rolled out on a setting 2 on my Atlas 150. And we're going to be using the rose imprint cutter. And I will show you how to do that. You're going to need a releasing agent. You can use water or you can use uh, baking, or not baking soda, but um, um, cornstarch. And that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, I'm going to grab my cornstarch here. Make me a little bit of line with it. Okay, I'll rub that in my Put that in my cornstarch. Tap a little bit off there. Okay, I'm going to cut out my first one. Oops. There we go. Cornstarch it again. Tap it off a bit. I'm going to cut out another one. There we go. There's that. So I'm going to leave it on there and pull up my clay around it. I'm going to put this tile in the oven. This way I don't mess it up because this is very, very, very soft. It uh, seems even softer than Sculpey 3. So it's a little bit hard to work with for me. But not too bad. So you just got to do the tricks of it. Now I'm going to bring over some blue and uh, we'll cut out couple of the uh, peacock feathers. Okay, now I got some cellophane here. I'm going to cover this one up because I don't want them to stick together when I put my blue over here. Well, I guess it's close enough that it ain't gonna, ain't gonna get on there. That's good. I just want to smooth it out and make sure I don't have any bubbles, and I do. Okay, and there's my blue also rolled out on a setting 2 on my Atlas 150. And I got the peacock cutter here, peacock feather cutter, excuse me. I'm going to tap that in there. Tap some of the excess off. Push it in there real good. There we go. Make one more. There we 
go. Okay, now I'm gonna clean off my mess here. And I'll pop that in the oven. And for the uh, Sculpey Bacon Bin, I believe I need to set it to 85 for 20 minutes, it says, which I will do 285 for an hour. Just like I would my regular Sculpey Primo. So I'm going to get this cleaned off and get it in the oven. Also, I just wanted to mention before putting it in the oven, put a piece of paper covering it so that it don't scorch or anything. Okay, those are done out of the oven and they've cooled down. I'm just going to take my blade and lift them off. set these off to the side for the moment and I'm going to bring over some Peacock Pearl Primo and show you how to do it with that onto a barrette and I'll be right back okay and here I have my Primo Peacock Pearl rolled out on a setting 2 my Atlas uh, 150 and I'm going to do peacock feathers again. And I need my release agent. Don't want to forget about that. They will get stuck. start here. Tap off the excess. Push it in there real good. Now it looks like I'm pressing really hard, but my hands are really weak. <laughs> So I'm just making sure that I've got it pressed in. There we go. There's one. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make another. Tap off the excess. I'm getting it all done and I shouldn't have done them that close together because I'm not leaving these ones on here to cook I have to lift them up so I'm gonna have to try to lift both of them up at the same time now there we go I don't think I pushed quite as hard on that one maybe I did don't look as deep. Okay, I'm going to clean up my mess here. Get that done. I'm going to move this. I'm going to get my blade. Make sure it's not sticky. I'm going to wipe it down with an alcohol pad. I keep these at the ready. The little well, let me show you. 
these little alcohol pads. I get them at Walmart. And I'm sorry for all the dings. I thought I already had it turned down. Anyway, I'm going to clean my blade off real good. Let it dry. And then I'm going to hopefully very carefully lift these up. Let me get me out of here. Here, let's do it. Maybe. There we go. My poly paste and brush. Let that back up there. Hopefully, it left a little mark. Yeah, it did. Okay. I'm going to brush that on. Pressing lightly so I don't mess up the uh, design. And I'm not too worried about the edges at the moment. Oh, I'll clean those up with the Dremel or a X-Acto knife. Either one will work. So whichever you prefer. Bake that in the oven like that. And that I'm not going to cook on my tile. I'm going to cook that one on my other pan. But I have a t-shirt on. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've got my pan here ready. I'm going to lay that on there. I think like this. It shouldn't hurt it because I've got a t-shirt on there and some towels. So that's going to cook like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bake this one lying flat. I just want to see if I can still get it to curve on one of these hair clips just to see if it will do it. That way I know what to exactly tell you in this video. What you can do, what you can't do. So, put that on my sheet. I'll show you what it looks like. That's what my sheet looks like. Some blue towels and a cut out of a cotton t-shirt. And I'm gonna go pop these in the oven and I'll be right back. Okay, while those are in the oven, we can work on these. And see, look how bendy they are. Real flexible. I'll wipe these down to get the cornstarch off.
and we're going to fix these edges, don't worry. Those are ready to go. I'm gonna get my Chicago electric Dremel thing here. And I'm gonna clean up these edges. You can either do it with a Dremel or you can do it with your X-Acto knife. Crap knife. Just get that edging off there. Nice and gently. So you can do that, or you can use the Dremel. I'm going to use the Dremel because it's faster. This one isn't going to work. I'm going to have to get out my little one. Because that one is just way too big to show you on camera. I'm going to change out the heads here. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I got my little drill master here. I'll try this. Here's one done, and I'm going to do the rest off camera because I'm sure you don't want to sit there and watch me do that to all of them. So I'll be right back when I get them all done. Okay, and I got them all cleaned up. Now I'm going to paint this one, and I'm going to be using Deco Art Dazzling Metallics Berry and festive green and I have these folk art uh, paint brushes they're detail brushes always a great thing to have let's see Some thin ones Okay. 
this one didn't imprint as good as I would have liked. That's why I'm going to use paint on this one. Make sure you shake up your paints real good. So pretty. Hopefully it shows up good enough on this. See it there? We'll have to see better when it dries. It's shown up as well as I wanted it to. It does take a long time to paint these when you do them this way, but the effect is so cool, I think. Darn it, did it again. So I'm just going to be here painting these. I'm sure you don't want to watch me do this whole thing. This is pretty much what you're going to be doing for a little while. It probably will take a while. Unless you're not as shaky as me. 
today I'm actually having a good day where I'm not as shaky as normal. So that's good. Oh, I like how it does these big leaves. It's pretty. So I will be back when I get this done and we'll work on the other one and I'll show you how I'm going to do that one. That one's going to be different. So I'll see you in just a few. Okay and I got the flower done. And there's what it looks like. If you can see it there. <laughs> Bad about putting things in frame. There you go. A nice shimmer in there. I like it. And now we're going to work on the uh, peacock feather. And I will show you the colors that we're going to need for that. Uh, festive green. And peacock pearl. and glorious gold and that's what we need for the peacock feather and the dazzling uh, metallics deco art so I will get that started just like before make sure you shake your paint up real good Starting off with my peacock pearl. Okay, that's all we need of that. And now for the glorious gold. I like it on my green one, but I think I'm really liking it on this blue.
There we go. That's all we need for the gold. And the rest will be all the uh, festive green. Okay, that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing is filling in the rest of this feather with the festive green. And I'm going to cut here and I'll be right back when I got it done. Okay, and I finally got it all done. And here's what that looks like. Okay, so now we're going to work on these two, and I'm just going to run some colors across those, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, for the rose, I am going to use uh, Folk Art Metallic Sequence Black, and for the uh, Peacock Feather, I am going to use Apple Barrels Pale Daffodil. So I think I'm going to start with this one first. Go. Wipe out. And so I don't get super messy, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my little finger coats. Okay. Make sure you shake it up real good. Gonna squeeze a little out of here. Get it down inside of all those grooves and that.
put that get down in there real good. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. This one, if I remember right, is real runny, so it might take a couple coats. Darn it. Okay. Spread it out real good. Fill in all those crevices. Okay. Sorry about that. Forgot I was still working on my bacon tile. just let these dry and I will come back and show you how we clean them up okay and while those are drying I thought I would show you how to put these hair clips onto the barrette or the uh huh I thought I'd show you how to put your polymer clay piece onto the barrette that's what I meant to say I've got some Loctite here I believe this is the flexible Loctite the super uh, the gel control was it the ultra gel control one of these is flexible I think it's the gray one you know I could be wrong I was going to write it down on the bottle and I forgot to I'm going to go with this one because I'm pretty sure it's this one. So, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. I'm going to put some super glue on here. Not a whole bunch. You don't want it to be messy. That was a little too much. Thumb. 
kind of line it up here. Wrap it around and hold. I'm just going to sit and hold that for a little bit, making sure that it dries where it's supposed to. I think I put a little bit too much on. It's going a lot thicker than I thought I was. Here we go. See, it's got a nice little curve to it. Yeah, I think I'm pretty even. Okay. Now this one. Same thing. Flip that over. Try and make sure I'm centered. Bring it in and hold. I made that one a little gooey too. Should be good. Here we go. <clears throat> so that's those. Like I said the other two are still drying. I'm gonna bring over the uh, ones made out of Primo. Okay. Here are the ones made out of Primo. I just wanted to let you know that the one that I baked with the barrette on it, um, I was going to cook it like that, but it had started to sag on the ends, so I pushed them back around and I set it up like that to bake. And it looks like it has done okay. So that's good. And like I said, the other one we did flat. And they're flexible enough. I think we can go ahead and put one of these on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trim these up and get them good to go. This one I think I'm going to paint individually. And I think this one's the one I'm going to do with a solid color. 
So let me get these cleaned up and I'll be right back. Okay, and here I got the feathers done. Well, cleaned up anyway. And I decided to go ahead and shine them too before I put my paint on them. I don't know if you can see that. It catches the light. Yes, indeed, you can shine up polymer clay before sanding. And this one I'm going to put on the barrette, but like I said, I'm going to color it first. I haven't decided what color I want to use. I'm still thinking about that. So let me think about that a little more, and I'll be right back. I'm back, and while I think of a color, these are done, so I'm going to go ahead and start removing the color I've started on this corner here, and I'm not sure if this is going to work with this color, the sequence black, because it's taking some real rubbing to get it off, and it's coming off the inside too, more than I want it to, but it is taking a pretty good rubbing to get it off of there. And it's like flaking and, and like these little flakes. So I don't know. I don't I don't think it's gonna work. I might have to go over it with some regular black acrylic paint, matte finish. Because this is not matte finish. Well, I guess most of this stayed. It might work. Takes a heck of a lot to get it out of there, that's for sure. Try to clean up these edges best I can. Sorry, I'm totally working off the camera. Just trying to get it off the edges here. Well, there's that. Let me get out a new one to do the yellow one. I made. Wow. because it was done with regular acrylic matte finish.
don't know why it's like that. This spot here that looks like it's just stuck there and it won't come up. Almost like there is an adhesive on it or something. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did it again. Right out of film. Out of view. I think that's got it. That's all there is to that. Okay, I've decided on dark purple. And I'm using Apple Barrel Purple Pansy. Check that up real good. Get out my finger coat here. Maybe if I can get it on. Okay. in there. <laughs> okay. Now I'll let that sit and dry. While that's drying, I'm going to paint my other feather, and I'm going to do it the same colors that I did the other one, the Dazzling Metallics, and when I get that done, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. It's dry, so now we're going to wipe off the excess. I might have let it dry a little too long.
I think I let it dry a little bit too long. But we're getting there. about done. And then I will show you how I'm going to put it on the barrette or the clip, hair clip, to make it a barrette. <laughs> okay, good there. That's good. Okay, and this is Primo, and it does flex a bit, so I'm going to glue it on here and see what happens. I have no idea how it's going to go, so we'll find out together. And I'll do it just like I did before with the uh, bacon bend. Zoom in a bit. Okay, and this one's going to be a little bit more tricky because it's not as flexible as the bacon bin. Ah, I got glue on me, I think. Yeah, maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to try to put that in the middle here. and then we'll just sit there and hold it till it dries. It might take a little bit because like I said it is not as flexible as the uh, bacon bend but it's not that much of a bend I don't think. I think it'll be alright. Now, if you have some different barrettes, some straight barrettes, I don't see why that wouldn't work. But most of these styles have a curve to them. I'll let go and see what happens. So far so good on that side. So 
So far, so good. I'm gonna hold it just a little bit longer, and I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me hold it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut here, and I'm gonna paint it, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, I finally got this one done. And I have to say, this one is absolutely my favorite. I think I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> it turned out gorgeous. And I got that shine on there from polishing it. Well, buffed it. Not polished, but buffed it out. Before I put paint on. And there's the other one. Some of the shine went away with, after I put the paint on it. I can probably buff it again. See how it comes out. Um, but I did want to mention, I believe it was this one. Um, no, it was this one. The one I did in the oven. On the thing. Um when I was trying to get the uh, sides all cleaned up I must have pushed too hard on it and it popped off so if you're going to use a, a Sculpey Bacon Bond or the Kato Poly Paste um, maybe put some clay down in these holes to attach it because it popped right off the whole thing it just pink so there's that tidbit <laughs> But I think this concludes our tutorial on making the barrettes with the leather effect and some Primo if you didn't have leather effect clay. Um, let's see. There we go. I think that's it. Let me zoom out here. There we go. You can see everything I made. So, if this video was helpful for you, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, um, you can find these cutters here at ojoycreations.com and uh, Joy will give you 25% off of your total order using code TLC. Thank you. Have a great day.